welcome back. Excuse my forehead. This is a new person. Hi guys. <laughs> Yay. I took a trip up to San Francisco to visit one of my oldest friends on his birthday. Yay. Yes, 20. 20. 26. Uh, so, so officially old. we've known each other for 20 years and that makes you my oldest friend and makes me feel really old. Today's fun t-shirt says love has no labels and um, that is because my good friend here and I have one thing in common. We both prefer men <laughs> over women. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, so given that we're 20 years into our friendship and we've known each other forever and we've gone through all the big milestones together, I thought it'd be fun to talk about dating and the differences and the similarities in heterosexual and homosexual relationships. Oh, it looked like I have a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and so, where do we begin? I started dating in like the traditional, like when you turn 16, you, like the guy comes over, meets your parents, you get to go out like on a date. Yeah. What is it like? What was like your first date experience like? Well, first, let me introduce myself. <laughs> I didn't do any of that. I'm it's terrible. <laughs> so, my first real dating experience in the gay community or the gay environment would mm -hmm. have would probably have to have been not that long. Well, it's actually long ago, like we're eighteen. Old. <laughs> yeah, I forget we're twenty six. We're getting old. <laughs> so eighteen, like, um, I didn't have anything in high school because this was when I was in high school. This was pre-Glee era, so anything before Glee, gay was still not cool in high school. Gay was not, oh, like, I have a gay best friend, like, you know, how, like, the, the, the shows made it seem like, and it was cool to have one. In my high school days, I was kind of still closeted, and except towards my senior year, I, op I admitted to being bi, which is such a... Like, Such ease, a cop out. <laughs> yeah, he's into the actual gayness. <laughs> it wasn't until college when I had my first dating experience. It was very traditional, like you, um, except we didn't go to each other's families, but it was like more of like, you know, I guess the traditional going out to a dinner or something, getting to know each other. We actually went out to lunch, which I think is better. Yeah, um, in the daytime. Can't yeah. really hide anything. Yeah. So, um,. And it was good, like I actually liked him, but the only, the only thing was it didn't really last long because we were just really far apart. We lived on opposite ends of the cities, and at that time he didn't really drive. I'm from LA actually, so. Yeah, and when you live on opposite, if you have to take a freeway to date in LA, yeah, it might not be worth it. <laughs> so you said your first traditional date. Did you have a heterosexual like dating experience? Did you ever take a girl out on a date? Um. <laughs> I, I had a heterosexual experience in high school, like sophomore year. It was, it lasted two weeks, and that's oh. when I knew <laughs> for sure um. that I was, <laughs> that I was not into the, you know, the meow down there. <laughs> Wait, did you go that far in a matter of two weeks? Well, like, she was sitting oh. on top of me. Okay. And nothing was going on there. Like, oh. I, nothing was aroused down there. That is that a telltale kind of, sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really awkward after. <laughs> oh, but, I'm going to have to ask off camera all, yes, so many crazy. questions. In heterosexual relationships, it's kind of expected for the man to pay. Mm -hmm. You're both men. Mm -hmm. Do you like, do you acknowledge like... Someone with the pants. Yeah, do you acknowledge like the, <laughs> like, the, 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 like the feminine and masculine energy, I guess. Um, when it comes to dates and figuring out who would take the bill, I guess. It really, there is no feminine or masculinity to it. It's just whoever, um, I guess, asked first. That's a big, that's a big um, factor into like, who would pay for the bill. Right. But if you're meeting the person for the first time, it's really acceptable to split the check. Okay. Like, it's not like, it's not weird. It, the guy wouldn't be turned off. It's, it's understandable. You're meeting for the first time. Right. Um, and then following the first time then, you know, it's expected for one person to start. Well, it's not expected, but I mean, it's 
That's but usually how it grows. Does it, does that, once it grows into that, is it more of like a who makes more money or is it like a masculine, like you're the guy, I'm the girl? Like, does, is, is that even like a thing? Like, do you acknowledge that in your relationships or in dating? Like, I'm the more feminine one and you're the more masculine. Is that a conversation? In I, other aspects, I I, yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, I totally get it. Um, I guess in my experience, at least, when it comes to financial sort of situations or like kind of conversations, it, it's kind of fluid. There's no like, oh, you're the guy, or like right. I'm the more I'm the more girly one. You should be taking me out places, <laughs> not you know. Oh, I love. It's, okay, it's so fluid. then that's a big difference because I can definitely say like, yeah. you should be planning these dates. I I just no, have to be there, and I honestly like shouldn't, and women definitely don't be Not that to say girl. that, like, all gay relationships are like this. I'm sure that there are relationships out there who happen to be gay that are more, they kind of fall along the lines of a Like a, a gender straight, role kind gen of Yeah, exa exactly. But at least in my experience, and I've dated both in LA and San Francisco, the Bay Area, that's usually what it is. Would you say that in your experiences... And it's also, like, and I think it is important to note, like, you were younger in San, in L.A. than you are in San Francisco, and you have more experience here, but, or more experience as a full-grown adult now living here. Do you think there's a big difference in the dating scene between the two cities? I can only say that when I dated in L.A., um, there was a sort of sense of, shallowness I noticed mm -hmm. not to say that LA gay like all LA gay guys are shallow no all LA people are <laughs> but there is more of an emphasis or like not not an emphasis but like people pay more attention to maybe the kind of car you're driving Status materialistic symbol. possessions mm -hmm. how fit you are mm -hmm. too good physique whereas in in the Bay Area and San Francisco it's a little more open-minded. I think there is status symbols here, but it's different. It's not like the car or the, the, the nice clothes or whatever. It's it's more of like, what are you doing for your career? What do you have a plan? And, and um, or are you just kind of like sitting back and like letting life happen? Yeah, yeah, there is definitely a sort of goal-oriented mindset here. If you're trying to make it out here, you have to be making money. Yeah, so the <laughs> like, goal is essentially the same. Like, you want to have, like, a good, comfortable life with your partner. Yeah. But how you go about getting that is probably different. Because, it, like, the homosexuality is very fluid here, mm -hmm. how, how do you figure out, like, who's gay and who's straight? Oh, it's so hard. Is it? It's hard, because... I feel like in LA, you can... Or at least in my experience, you definitely knew who was gay, and um, just by the way they carried themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas here, you could think someone is straight, but they're actually gay, or you could think someone is gay and they're actually straight. The gay guys here, there, there's more of a mix of them, and there's not like a hardcore stereotype like the like the ones you see on TV in the media, the flamboyant like yes. Like, yeah, 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 like me, but a male. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are those types here too, but there's also the more masculine type of gay guy who has a beard or is like the the term here is called a bear, like who's a little more hairy. <laughs> um, um, and they drink beer. They're just they're like straight guys basically, but they're gay. Like right. they like penis too. <laughs> and or there's the subtle type where you can't really tell right away. Um. They could be just metro straight, or like they're gay, but they kind of dress like a normal, like straight, I guess, techie hipster guy would. Yeah, which is also in LA kind of hard to tell. I think hipsters are always hard to tell. Hipsters are always hard to tell, no matter where you go. And not to say that all the gays in LA are like the certain type, because I have, um, you know, met people who are, you know, more masculine and not like the flamboyant, like feminine, more in touch with their feminine side type, but they're just, you know, you don't see them as often as you do here. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you go about asking or finding out? <laughs> just come up, comes up Honestly, in conversation? Honestly, here, it's, it's okay to like, I, I've noticed, not from me personally, but I've noticed other people, because I have a lot of gay coworkers and gay friends, um, they're kind of not afraid to go up to a guy and just wonder if, you know, he's on the same team. 
And if he's not, okay, oh well, well, you're cute. But like, in LA, I wouldn't be as confident to do that. Or like, I, I mean, I guess I could be more confident to do that here. I'm just kind of shy. I'm a shy gay. <laughs> I'm a shy straight with a YouTube channel about stuff. I still mainly meet people in the gay community through an app, which there's some pros and cons to that, but um, that's mainly how I do it right now. So then on the app, because I think what I've noticed for app dating, especially in heterosexual communities is a lot of them are simply like hookup apps and it's really rare although I do have two friends who have like now long-term relationships with people they met on tinder and they'll be on here eventually but it is more like a hookup type of culture would mm -hmm. you say the same goes for the gay community tinder who you know in which the straight community uses it too and mm -hmm. Mostly. From what, from what, my, uh, from my understanding, from what some of my straight friends say, is that Tinder is more of a hookup app. Right. But in the gay community, it's actually a dating app. It's like people actually want to text and get to know each other and maybe set up a date sometime. Yeah. There's another app called Surge, which is strictly a Tinder for gays, mm -hmm. but it's also more of like, let me get to know you. A relationship sort of thing. type yeah. of thing. Maybe because it's different with like in the heterosexual world where it's like very much a hookup thing. I always think it's good to ask like, so what brings you here? Like, what are you looking for? Definitely one of the first questions in the gay world too. Okay, because yeah. it's like it's don't... the gay world, <laughs> the gay and the gay world. If we're talking about Tinder, um, the way to not get me to talk to you is is just. Just to basically like blatantly state that you're looking for a hookup there because it's really not common for the gay community to use Tinder for a hookup. Right. You go to Grindr for that, so you do that there. Take your shit elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a Grindr situation ship? What do you mean by that? Have you ever like just hit up somebody to hook up? Oh, yeah, of course. That's what I use Grindr for. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grindr is the hookup app. Has, have things happened in this bed? Um, not since, you know, like, I swear, like, nothing has happened since, like, months ago and these sheets are washed, okay. so. <laughs> as long as the sheets are washed. Free for all. Uh, so now I'm just gonna ask you, like, a flash round of questions sure. that are just, like, popping in okay. my head. Okay. I'm, I'm painful the first time. Yes, very. Second time? Not as much. Now it's, just, is it like, yeah? The, well, okay, so our... Our things down there, our butts work differently than the JJ's. <laughs> the well, yes, would, yes. <laughs> like, you haven't done, like, intercourse, full-on intercourse in a long time. It tightens up there, so, like, mm. the next time you do it, it hurts again. You, like, do it, like, pretty Regular. consistently, you know, it should remain kind of loose down there. No, that's what happens with vaginas, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I shouldn't generalize. See, that's coming from the gay world, generalizing... I mean, you have no reason to know about vaginas, but they do tend to stretch out, so everybody do your kegels. Do you remember when we were like in first or second grade and you ran up to me and you were like, how do I act more like a boy? And I was like, I, I don't have remember no idea. this. You don't? I don't remember this, but I I remember, I'm not surprised. I do remember like sitting and you running up and I guess people were being mean to you and you asked like, you asked us, which was still funny to me because like I don't know what to tell you how to act more like a boy I'm I, I'm a girl <laughs> I'm a six-year-old girl yeah. what am I supposed to know about I, boys? all I know is Barbies and pink <laughs> that's what society told me I need to know about the funny thing is even when I was that age I wasn't playing with Barbies or or dolls or anything yeah. I was still playing with like toy cars and everything yeah. I just I didn't have that I didn't click with the guys I guess when did you know internally like I'm kind of different and I kind of like him more than I like her. I want to say third grade. Oh, wow. I want to say, I was really quiet about it though. I would not say anything. Yeah. And then I, I didn't want to accept it. And then it, as I grew older, by seventh grade, I was like, I, yeah, I, I'm looking at guys a lot now. Like that's when your hormones are all raging yeah. to preteen. Yeah. Um, and so that's when I started to accept it, but I also was still in the closet. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would accept it internally, but not outwardly. Mm -hmm. um, and then high school, same situation until senior year, pretty much, where I opened up as bi. And 
even in during high school, like, I mean, I had my first time during high school, like my sophomore year. Oh. Yeah. What? But I was like all closeted about it. All the things. <laughs> She doesn't know. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I mean, then again, I'd known you since we were five, and you didn't tell me you were, like, officially gay, so we were, like, out like out of high school, like, yeah. 20 or so. And yeah, I was like, Thank college. Thank you. Gee, thanks. <laughs> I hadn't guessed that 15 years ago, but yeah. it's nice to hear <laughs> directly from you. So, like I said, this is just one perspective, but this is a really special interview for me because it is your birthday, and because I've known you for so long, and because I have such um, like admiration and having seen you go through literally like seeing you go through the entire process of finally coming out and like being comfortable What's and happier because yeah. um, I think I think what happens and I'm really glad it didn't happen to you is that when people are closeted for so long the depression gets really overwhelming and I know you were kind of and some people who are closeted, they even go on to, like, continue their straight life. Like, even yeah. marrying a girl. And yeah. then, like, they, they it turns into a mess and... after that because then they start, you know, they, they, they want to, she, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, a massive problem. But even more so than, like, a secret life, like, depression in the gay community is so high because of the non-acceptance and of, like, the issues in the community. And so I think it's really... Like, it makes me really happy to see how you've gone through so much mm -hmm. and then to be happy and be where you wanted to be always. Yeah. And so, all oh, this just makes me so happy. Aww. And I love you. Aww, and I'm too. so grateful that you did this with me. Um, Girl, this is the last thing I wanted to do on my birthday. I just want to be real with you. Can, gonna, we, can we talk about the girl <laughs> statement for a second? Yes. <laughs> well, see, this is, that's my, that's my, I guess that's my feminine side coming out. But... To be real, let's be real. I was like, oh God, I'm going to be on an interview. Uh, they're just going to ask me questions. This is the last thing I want to do on my birthday, but I'm going to do it to be nice because um, we've been... Did you have fun though? Forever. I did have fun. Yeah. And it was actually really comfortable. It wasn't like I was being bombarded or interviewed. And no, like, I definitely wouldn't ask anything that would make you uncomfortable <laughs> because it's not my place to, yeah. to try to like get that out of you. Yeah. Like I want you to share what you feel comfortable. But I also want to teach people so much light to all of you. Thank you to Nelson, my first special guest. Um, thank, you. thank you for letting me crash your bed. So technically, I'm not in bed with Bella today. It's in bed with Nelson. And <laughs> uh, we're going to have fun now. So bye. Love bye. you.